This is grounded. The farmer poet Wendell Berry wrote in What Are People For? Teachers are everywhere. What is wanted is a learner. Today, we talk about the opportunity of ignorance. We visit garden guru Steve Mydelsky to purchase one of his curated gardens and learn about his mentors. We also head into the studio to finish our album. But first, let's make a flower arrangement. Hi, I'm Dylan Hodges. And I'm Heidi Feek. Welcome to our home in Florence, Alabama. Today we're going to be working with a bunch of beautiful dahlias that we got uh, from our friend Steve's garden. But first we're going to start with the greenery of our foliage. So Dylan, will you hand me the privet? I know what that is. You do? Because I just told you before we started this. Do you want all of it or just? No, just some of it. Now this grows all over our yard. It's technically a weed, but I find that weeds make the best foliage for arrangements. Can you hear me some more, please? I yes. usually do uh, any of my branches that I add, I'll either do in groups of three or groups of four. So if it's in a group of three, I'll do it uh, in a triangle shape. And if it's a group of four, I'll do it, put it in, in a square shape. Let's put a dahlia in here. Is this from our garden? <laughs> no, this is from our friend Steve's garden. His dahlias are so beautiful and he's so good at growing dahlias. Um, he's taught me so much. He's just a wealth of knowledge about dahlias, roses, anything. Um, every day he does a garden walk on his Instagram live and he just walks through his garden and basically just says whatever he's thinking about and uh, a lot of that is plant related and it's really helpful and uh, he's been available to me to answer so many questions and it's truly been amazing to have somebody that knows more than me to learn from. Another farmer philosopher type is Wendell Berry who's still with us, he's still alive, mm -hmm. he's an older gentleman now. He's been a poet and uh, an activist for um, the earth. But he said teachers are everywhere. I really take that to heart and I've seen it my whole life of learning how to play guitar, learning music in general. Anytime I allowed myself to be open to learning something new, a teacher would present himself or herself. Mm -hmm. It's not, unfortunately, it's not super popular to spend time doing something that you're not very good at. <laughs> I wish that yeah. uh, it was more popular to do that. Although it's not always fun to, I know for the first year and even sometimes now for sure, um, I find myself not reaching the goals that I want to reach or not being able to grow something that I thought I'd be able to grow. And it's just a learning process. With the garden, one of the hardest things probably are, is you, when you want to try something new, you have to wait a whole new year to yeah. experiment, essentially, which is uh, definitely different than a lot of the things I spend my time doing. And learning in general is just really failing over and over, and over, and over again. again. Yeah, I agree with that. And with gardening, with, when you have to wait a year to, to see if you failed or succeeded, that's why having a mentor is so important because they can guide you and help you get a few wins in the beginning. What did Joseph Campbell call the mentor? There was always like a magical... Um... Joseph Campbell was the mythologist. He did comparative mythology and he helped uh, George Lucas write Star Wars following his theory of mythology called the monomyth. Without getting too much into it, the second step um, after the quote unquote call to adventure is uh, the supernatural help. You see it in, in stories, um, you know, as long as human beings have been telling stories, but in Star Wars in particular, it's Obi-Wan Kenobi, the master who 
gets you uh, what the help you need to cross the first threshold and, and fight your demons. But once you start looking for them in movies or in stories, they, they show up all over the place. Well, I think there's a reason why the monomyth works so well or makes so much sense is probably because it represents our experiences in life. Yeah. You know? And so finding a mentor, you know, in whatever you're interested in is probably going to be kind of like supernatural assistance in a way. I kind of feel like that with Steve. Steve has definitely been your supernatural assistance. And uh, that's why I'm so excited that we actually get to go visit Steve at Natchez Glen and get some more information about the value of mentorship and cut these beautiful dahlias. Someone shared one of your posts with me yeah. and said he's local, you should follow him. And since I've been following you, I've learned such a treasure trove of knowledge. I actually took a flower course, which I told you about, yeah. to learn gardening, um, which has been really helpful. And then having you teaching me has been so amazing. Was there anyone when you were first starting out gardening that was kind of like a Obi-Wan Kenobi? Right. I guess via book, it's probably Adrian Bloom in the UK. He was interesting to me because he was taking a group of plants in like conifers and maples that like I personally was attracted to at the beginning, but showing them in a way that was garden based. I was also really fortunate, sort of in the, the same way what you're sharing. There was a message board where uh, there was somebody on there who was really into Japanese maples. And I saw that they were also local. How important do you think it is to find someone who's in your area? I think it's usually important because gardening is hyper-local. So I think when you find people that are in your area, it's the, you know, you trade DMs on this subject. It was just sort of that great thing to have someone else to bounce things off of. Now I hear you talk a lot about Christopher Lloyd. Yeah. What yeah. do you like about his gardening so much? Okay. So Christopher Lloyd was willing to say things that other people wouldn't say mm -hmm. about plants, right? And his opinion, in many ways, is what fueled his career. He represents like the best of gardening to me. Okay. Like he's yeah. this mindset of, it's not for everybody. It's not low maintenance. You're going to have to put something into it to get something out of it. A lot of what really could make gardening great for people if it became more of a, a philosophical pursuit as much as it is a practical, I want to grow a pretty plant kind of pursuit. So we've got a shade garden here. Yes. Light shade. So all of these are light shade. Light shade to me is like, you have a really big tree over top, mm -hmm. like, but the biggest part of the limbs are 15 feet in the air. Or it's like early morning light, the least heat, least intense light of the day. To me this year, early year, was year of the hellebore. Mm, so I hellebore. love hellebores. Yeah. This is a hellebore, yeah? Yep, that's snow love. Mm -hmm. This will actually bloom in winter. It'll start to produce flowers in as early as December. Amazing. And it could go all the way till April. Then uh, geranium. So this is uh, a newer breeding geranium called Cloud Nine. It's got a double bloom, right? Depending mm -hmm. upon where you're at, it makes a massive difference for this plant. Okay, okay, and what should I be looking out light for? Light shade. Okay. <laughs> right? Light shade on geranium is the safest choice. All right. Um, Who's this? This is a eucarella, mm -hmm. redstone fall. Does it flower? It'll produce small white flowers normally in like after it's been in the ground like five months or so in the growing season or the second year if you plant it like in the fall. Okay. Woodland anemone. Okay, anemone. 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 It's one of the greatest things of all time. So totally. these are woodland anemone. Uh -huh. And there's a really great thing that's happened because like you said, like these two are so close to each other, mm -hmm. right? This 
is one of the Swan series, which was hybridized in Scotland. Mm -hmm. This will bloom earlier in the year. And what you have over there is Whirlwind, which will bloom later in the year. Okay. And I think what's cool about having them both is not only they like awesome plant, but there's that learning moment of like anemones are different. Mm -hmm. Like this one is doing this and this one is doing that. But when they can work together, you get that best of both worlds. It's one of those thoughts of like when you build a garden, you know, you want plants that have a textural component, height difference. You know, it's like building a, a painting. Mm -hmm. you're, you're layering things. You know, it's not one plant to do everything, mm -hmm. but they each have their own part to play in it. And the two of them, I think, it's gonna be a group of plants you're gonna see a ton of in the future because they are like that great in gardens. Wonderful. Well, I can't wait to plant these. Thank you so much, yeah. Steve. Thank you. Heidi. Thank you for having us. I'm so excited and um, we'll keep in touch. Yeah. It was so hot there, but oh my gosh, it was so beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm so glad that we have a little bit of it that he shared with us to have here. Look at how big this dahlia is. That's honking. Yes, yeah, honking. Heidi says uh, things that are big are honking. This is a honking dahlia. Who is the lucky beneficiary of this arrangement that we're working on today? Oh, would you, you like to say? Yeah. Our producer Jay and his studio. We're going tomorrow to finish recording our new record. We're gonna bring him some flowers because we're so thankful and uh, we wanna bring a little joy to his we've studio. Been, we've been working with our producer, Jay, for about a year now and uh, it's been a long process of figuring out how our music fits together much like right? <laughs> you're trying to figure out how to get this big honking thing in there. Oh, yeah. We'd experienced some hardship and, and loss and we were trying to find out what our motivation was to continue making music should we continue making music? Should we do something else? Why are we doing it? it that was the big question, why? Mm -hmm. And uh, Heidi said something like, we need a goal. What we settled on was let's pick a producer, someone who would be perfect for our music. But maybe two years after that, we were in the studio with Jay having our first meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, shortly after that, we, we ended up um, signing a production deal with him. So it became an amazing, uh, motivator and it ended up working out. We really wanted to work with him because we knew he could guide us. He could be uh, a musical mentor for us, much like Steve mm -hmm. is your flower mentor. Jay is just the best in the world. I cannot wait to finish this record. Yeah. I'm so excited. Luckily we've had the garden to uh, keep us busy in the meantime, but I, I am ready, I will say that. Will you hand me the bone set? I this think what? that's how you pronounce it. This is another uh, weed that I foraged from our yard. I love foraging weeds. You'd be surprised how many things in your yard you can use to help with your arrangements. Can you grab me some more of that, Dilly? Bone set. It just adds a really Something nice like airy texture to the arrangement, I think. I, I pulled really this leaf off it. and I was like, I guess I'll just put it right here. You did that's, it. That's, that's a, a good spot. spot. <laughs> that is a really good spot. And when I cut my stems to put in the arrangement, I will always cut at an angle like this. And the reason that I do that is because when I put it inside of the container, if it hits the bottom and it's got a flat stem, it's not going to be able to pick up any water. And so if the stem is cut at an angle, um, it's able to have some water, even if it's touching the bottom of the container. Let's see. I like the way the front of this is looking. We're losing some petals here. Oh, it's getting boy. all these petals. It's getting romantic. <laughs> Let's add some more romance. How about these, um, these the here romance. roses? These are David Austin Rose, Olivia Rose Austin. Yes. And if you live in zone 7B like we do, these boys thrive. But we don't have one of these plants. No, this is on Steve my does. list. And these are Steve's roses, of course. You can tell they're Steve's roses by how beautiful they are.
So we added some roses in there. Will you hand me that blue ball jar right there, Dilly? Blue ball jar. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you were going to ask me uh, to pick a flower and I thought I was going to be tested. Did you get nervous? I was ready. Basil, zinnias, and a black-eyed Susan. You're oh. so right. Rude. Rude Becky. Rude Becky. Is that yeah, right? Rude, that's right. Rude Becky. Rude Becky. Uh, this is basil here. This is cinnamon basil. It smells oh so good. It's nice to have a little bit of smelly stuff in the arrangement. I get a little nervous sometimes because some people are really sensitive to smells. Let's see, we've got some more basil over here. Or as Monty Don calls it, basil. These cosmos are called purity. They're currently growing completely sideways in my garden right now, but they're still growing. Let's check it out. Do you think Jay's gonna like this arrangement? Who is Plato without Socrates? Who is Luke without Obi-Wan? Assimilating the knowledge of those who have gone before us can guide us through life. These days when I look back, I see the teachers were always there helping me on my journey. Well, that's all for now. Find something you love and do it every day.